Hello and welcome back everybody, I'm on Proper Varian and what you can see in front of you is dreamy. It is just so goddamn cute. We are back here of course in Manalots and we're continuing our series where we will be building historically designed villages. That means I have taken a really long look at how people build villages and why they did it and we're going to go over that as we build it. This really cute looking village that we already have right here is called a Rundling, which, I mean, okay, do I really have to explain it? Because it is round. This is a very unique style, you don't find this too much. I think uh, Czechia and Poland also actually have a couple, but the vast majority of these Rundlings exists essentially just in a certain corridor in Germany. This was created in around 1100, 1200. I believe actually Henry the, uh, Henry the Lion, Heinrich der Löwe, uh, was, you know, played a big part in designing and implementing these when settling new areas. And these particular villages here actually were more interesting than you might even think from the form, because they almost exclusively housed Slavic populations. Obviously, this was part of the Ostsiedlung, so when Germany was moving into the east and, well, you can tell. Instead of mixing and matching Germans and Slavs, where that could create a couple of you know, uh, angry responses right there, obviously, because they had different cultures and maybe even a different faith, depending on whether you already were a Christian Slav or whether you were still pagan. They kind of built the settlement to keep the peace and to have a productive environment. What we're gonna do, though, is I actually need to change the way this is, at the very least slightly. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this road tool. I would like to make this circle smaller. I was thinking about this, and this circle always was kind of big. And while we were walking there, you can't even really see the other side of the circle. And that's not ideal. And actually, I gotta get rid of the marketplace right here. That's not ideal. And the reason for this is that, well, these are tight-knit communities. I kind of don't need more than, let's say, maybe 20, 25 families down here, and we, we can definitely do this, even if I make this a little bit tighter. Let me actually put the curvature up. Uh, there you go, that's perfect. And then we're gonna take a pretty tight curve right here, I think. Actually, let's make it even tighter. It, it's a bit, of, a bit of an oval shape now. I'm doing this essentially because I want this to be a relatively small, well, it's not a square, but a relatively small circle. This village will be self-contained. I will make it so that basically every family here is relatively low in its level, so the houses won't go higher than two or one, and then they also work very much nearby, because in this region I will actually have a secondary settlement, and that secondary settlement will be different, because it will have a different shape and a different purpose. If this right here is indeed the Slavic settlement, then I think right over there, somewhere in that direction anyway, should be the German settlement. So directly, uh, you know, where basically the nobility lives. We're gonna build the manor there, and then a manor-focused settlement I think should be perfect. But anyway, um, let's snake our way up here. I do really, really love uh, a little bit of snaking. In particular, we actually have a huge benefit from where we're starting here. You're gonna see this in a second. Because by going around this tiny little forest, we have a huge advantage where you just can't see. You can see already we have a little bit of a bend here because of the hill, but on top of that, if we have buildings behind these trees, we will never know. Just because, well, these trees are doing us a big service. It's difficult in this game to put some natural barriers, you can see some cosmetics here, but sadly, you can only erase shrubbery. I would love to place shrubbery, but yeah, that doesn't seem to be possible at all. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that. If worst comes to worst, I'm gonna create a forestry and just plant some artificial forests while you're not watching so that we have some beautiful uh, stuff going on. Either way, these houses need to go. That's okay, we can rebuild them, don't worry about it. We have the technology, and now we have a much, much smaller circle. I think we were running like this, right? Yeah, much, much smaller. This is much tighter, and all I gotta do now is actually build a second marketplace. Uh, I'm looking at this. I think I will only want a pretty small marketplace here. Let's put it maybe like this. Yeah, this should be fine. 11 stalls, 9 stalls. Honestly, 8 stalls should be fine, right? What do we need here? We need food, we need firewood, we need clothing, and I don't think we're going to do much more in this settlement. So for the time being, let's maybe do 8 stalls. That seems pretty okay to me. We might put like a tavern here. Right now I do like the grove here, but okay, that is something for the future. For the time being, let's just build, how about a couple of houses, the ones that we just ripped out. Let me take the proper look here. Um, I don't want them to get too close to this hill, so let's keep it maybe something like this. And if we cut it down to just two, we actually have four plots, because like I said, you can build this up and 
Boom, there you go. Beautiful. Right, so we're going to rebuild these houses. That is going to be fine. The other thing that we are, of course, doing is building this tannery. And this tannery is interesting because it will sink massively and... Well, that means it should be far, far away from the actual city, which it is. Fair enough. That is a good thing. But it also is, oh my god, it's just so far away from the stuff it consumes. Uh, the hunting camp is all the way over here. Uh, it's very inconvenient. I might just put down like a couple of houses over here eventually. But for the time being, we're going to build this tannery. Um, yeah, and look at that. So fast with how they have rebuilt these stalls. They really know how to do it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, um, currently these food stalls or and these firewood stalls are directly maintained by the workers in the buildings that is producing whatever they're selling. You can see right here, this family works here and they're also maintaining a stall, which means if you think about it, obviously this family can't be as productive because they need to maintain this stall. I will eventually shift these responsibilities over to the granary and to the storehouse. For the time being, we can't really do that and honestly, we don't really want to be doing it. Yeah, okay. What actually really matters to me is that we can set us up in such a way that we get migration as soon as possible. You get migration if you are past 50%. To be past 50%, you need to make people very, very happy. If we check out the marketplace, you can see right now, zero food variety, no fuel and no clothing. Um, the clothing should come, of course, with a tannery, but again, that is a very difficult production cycle. What we are going to do instead is this right here. We're going to take a look at this burgage plot. And then we have these options right there. If you have a backyard, and if this backyard is big enough, you can be producing some of these side products. And these side products will make it so that, you guessed it, you get diversity. I could create a goat shed right here for the hides, but I don't think we're going to be doing this. Uh, or maybe, honestly, no. What we're going to be doing is we will create a chicken coop right here. And then over there, we're going to create a goat shed so that we have a hide production spot very, very close that can then bring them to the tannery and all of a sudden we might get the clothing need also fulfilled. Again, once we get over 50%, so if we have no homeless, if everybody is getting whatever they need in food and in uh, clothing and so on, we will start getting migration. And migration is going to be super important so that I can actually work the fields as soon as the next winter is over. It's August now, so we do have time, but... Yeah, I am looking already towards the next couple of years. Ooh, and I think they already finished the first one. Let's take a quick look at this, right? What are you? You are the chicken coop. Oh, take a look at him. <laughs> look at the chicken running around. This guy's feeding them. Did that guy just say something about nipples? All right, you know what? Why don't you take care of that? I'm not going to think about that too long. I love that you can see the forage over there, but you got these tiny little trees in the way, so that it looks, you know, at least a little bit far off. Very, very cool. Oh, and here we got the first goats. They have arrived. Wait a minute. The hides imply that we kill them. <laughs> to be a bit more sustainable, shouldn't they be giving me milk? Poor goat. That, that goat is gonna die. Something, by the way, that I found to be super, super cool was that so many of you in the comments pointed out, oh yeah, I heard about this. The Germans and the Sorbs. The Sorbs even exist today. By the way, fun fact, not too long ago, the minister president, so the head of government of Saxony, so the German state of Saxony, was actually Sorbian. Anyway, the really interesting thing is that many, many, many of the towns and villages in this settlement region were actually, and are still to this day, named in a Slavic fashion. So they they essentially have Germanized Slavic names and we're going to kind of, you know, do this as well. Currently we're called Nusloer. Now I think we can rename ourselves and we shall do that. I will be naming this region and this region will have two settlements so technically it should be two names but that's okay. We're going to name this region Kazaritz because Kazaritz apparently comes from Kozachi and that apparently means the settlement of the people that own goats. And, well, that is basically the very first thing that we are proactively doing. That's the first thing we have actually established right here. I would like to do so much more, but right now, Kaseritz, I think, is the right name for this tiny little town. Ooh, and they cited a bandit camp. Let's take a look at this. Where are you? I need these bandits. I said this in the past. They're very useful. If we somehow manage to take down their camp, is this camp... Are they empty? Ah, so sometimes when these bandits move, when they move out, when they try to pillage that kind of stuff, these camps are just empty and you can just sack them. And I'm kind of, listen, I am I am maybe the real bandit here. I would love to do that. They give you so many resources, it would be absolutely massive. As you saw earlier, when I built that chicken coop and of course the uh, goat farm, that cost me regional wealth. And that was crazy expensive. I need more money. So I'm going to be on the lookout here. Uh, no luck so far, but maybe in the nearby future. Now I am curious though, 
How exactly do they do the tanning? I honestly am not an expert when it comes to the working procedure. They're washing the leather and then they dry it. Oh, they were already done. So it's, it's just the washing procedure, I guess, in the game. I assume the tanning, I, I think you like scoop out the remaining meat chunks or anything that is still connected. You know, the skin that you took off at the same time. But we're already, we're already done here, huh? And you, yeah, there you go. You now maintain a market stall. And that means that your products are actually going to market, which in turn means these people should become happier soon enough. Uh, they need church, okay, but they also need clothing. So yeah, we are slowly climbing up there. You can now see that we have market food variety and clothing market supply plus two. Uh, I think we'll have to wait until past winter though, just to, you know, actually get some major migration, but any migration is good. Let me just double check it. Listen, just checking in. The moment you're no longer home, I will pillage your holdings though. Oh, and we barely made it. We now have an approval of 50. If this lasts, that will mean that, yep, there you go. We have low population growth, which is better than no population growth. So I'll definitely, I'm, I'm happy to see that. Let's hope that we can soon get a wave of migration. Even just two or three families making it in here. Whoa, our approval went down so drastically. All right, you know what? Any migration would be great. Doesn't look like we're gonna get any though. I turned off the day-night cycle, by the way. We might take a look at this. I might turn it on just to actually like, basically do a walk around on the map to kind of zoom around, but it looked so dark in the actual videos. I, I think I'm just not gonna do that for the time being. Again, if it looks good, I'm gonna show you some footage, but other than that, we will have pure day, even if it gets dark sometimes because of the rain. Wait, what happened here? I think I, I, think I have a bit of a bug. Why are they... <laughs> Why are there three families in this house? You're not supposed to be in there. Um, do I have any open slots anywhere? Zero out of two. Uh, maybe you want to go into this one? That's that's very that's very confusing. I'm not sure that I can move them though. Uh, I, I don't think there's a button to do that. I could assign them to a different workplace. What are, what are you doing, pal? What? <laughs> can you move elsewhere? I mean, I guess at the very least, they won't really be needing any firewood. It will be warm enough in that house as is. And there you go. Winter has come indeed. Now let's take a look because we are very well prepared. We have plenty of food and plenty of fuel, which to me means maybe I can tell them to stop working here. But honestly, I think I'm fine. I'm not really going to shuffle them around. My big hope is still that we just get additional families, which so far no luck, but eventually it will happen. Let's take a look though. What does this look like? This is just the start of winter, so you can still see some grass. God, I love the way this looks, especially on the houses when they start. Take a look at that. They are heating, and it just looks so cute. Oh, let me sample. Oh, take a look at that. There you go. That's the leather that they're producing. Yeah, that looks a lot more realistic. This countryside is our enemy. Let's be real here. If you are outside, if you are ever found far too far away from your village, I mean, that might just be your death sentence. Luckily, everybody here is sticking together, even the three people in this house. <laughs> Listen, I can't explain it, but good for them. Anyway, let's hope that we get some migration over the winter so that we can start off strong in the spring. All right, and we have not had any luck with migration so far. As beautiful as the winter season is, nobody seems to be finding their way into our town. Now, I did build this saw pit so that we can make some planks, and then with those planks, we will be building a church, which will also make people very, very happy. And again, once they are happy, they will come in droves. At least, that's the dream. Um, there you go. They're bringing another piece of lumber. They will, of course, you know, use it right here in the saw pit, and as soon as we have enough, I will tell them to build the church. The idea here is that, well, my idea was that we could, without a church, even attract migration, but... So far, no luck. Oh, and look at that. This is how this saw pit actually works. They are sawing through it, and they can only do this thanks to, of course, the basically the hole that they created there. And that creates, I think we have now a total of 10 planks, making it so we need 10 more, and then we can order the church. And oh my god, finally, we have our very first migration. We have the very first family to actually make it here. Thank God is all I can say, because now we have a builder, but we also have five fully occupied jobs. The more people we get, the better will we be able to, well, literally do anything. For the time being, I'm just going to leave you where you are. As builders, they will just, you know, take care of this and that. And then eventually, once we have the planks, right now we're still at 10, again, the church is coming. All right, and now let's actually talk about the church. Winter is almost over. We are in February. I'm not sure that we're actually going to have, you know, bread and all that stuff just in the coming summer. Well, actually, I am certain that we're not going to have that. Just 
because I didn't get to having the field set up at this point, but that's okay. The point here is now, we want to have as much happiness as we can so that we can have an explosion in population boom right here. And I'm thinking, right, if we take a look at this, we have this hill right there. This is not really a hill even in comparison to this. It's, it's not low, as you can see, much, much higher than over there, but this right here is the hill. And I'm thinking the Slavic population here would surely be blessed and feel connected to God if we gave them a church, uh, where is it, there it is, that looked directly at them. Let's take a look at this, right? If we take a look at this hill, this is the highest spot. I want the church. I, I was thinking maybe we're going to put the church like this, but I don't think so. We're going to put it directly staring at the center of town. That sounds about right to me. Let's put you down right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect you via... A bit of a snaky pathway, you know, I love snaky pathways. Not too much, but quite a bit. You know what, let's do another, let's do another bend there. Why wouldn't we, right? And all of a sudden, we are getting a church. Now, this church is incredibly important. If you lived in the medieval period, which you most certainly didn't, because otherwise you wouldn't be watching this, you would realize that getting the grace and the blessing of God is unbelievably important for everything you do. I mean, think about it. This is your entire horizon. This is where you live, this is where you work, this is the order of things. And this right there is why you do it. This explains the world to you. Everything, all the questions that you have are answered right there. Now this church is also quite significant and interesting. Like I said, first of all, the Rundling types were built uh, on a relatively low terrain, which meant that you couldn't really have a basement or, for example, a graveyard in that position. Which is why the Rundling is one of the very, very few settlement types that does not have a church directly locally in the center of town. Instead, they would have it fairly far away. Again, I also mentioned this in the last video. We don't know exactly whether this was just because of the reason that I just gave you, or whether the Slavs were still pagans that didn't really like a church in the center of town. But either way, the churches were built outside. Now, this also did, of course, have other reasons. You could, for example, connect several population centers directly to this church. If you had, and this was very common in large parts of Europe, just very isolated, very small uh, kind of fiefdoms, you know, where you have a tiny little parcel of land that is just administered by the local farmers, they can't really have a local church. So instead, you built this central church. If we were to expand in that direction, that church could serve those people as well. On top of that, of course, at this point, when we did this expansion, castles already were a thing. Now, me saying that sounds very, very silly. But you have to realize one thing, especially during the period of the Magyars, when they raided, so this is roughly 300 years before we are starting to build here, and especially in the period of the Vikings. So when they would, for example, haunt not just all of Europe, but very specifically England, well, monasteries and, of course, churches were the safe spaces. They were built very centrally, mostly and very importantly, because you needed to hide somewhere. They were safe, they were stable buildings, and that's just really no longer necessary here. The military control, the monopoly on violence, was largely established in this period. Obviously, warfare, bandits, some type of raids would still occur, but much, much less than in previous periods. Which is why, when the Ost ceiling occurred, when this design right here became, you know, basically the hottest thing in town, well, you can afford to have the church built somewhere else because you will have a local fortification set up, you will have local castles, and you will have a network that will keep your citizens safe even if they can't hide in a church. With different time periods, you will also have different priorities. You can see this anywhere in the world, but most importantly, in how we build our villages. And look at that, they're already bringing the very, very first tree stump right here. Absolutely beautiful. I'll let them build this, and maybe we'll just take a look at this in a bit of a time-lapse. Oh, time-lapse? Uh, I think not. What is this? A new message has arrived. Raiders near. We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Yes, but uh, I am concerned. Uh, they will come for me, and <laughs> I will have to fight them in a year. Let's hope that we can do that. I do also want to say, just for the record, this entire topic of castles is something that is super, super misrepresented in, for example, CK3. Castles in Germany were a super, super late thing. This right here is when we start building castles, when we're establishing those, which is, again, why the network and why the creation of towns can be different. 
<sighs> Until roughly Barbarossa, we were very, very bad at building castles in the north, you know, north of the Alps, entirely because we didn't need them. And then Barbarossa went all the way down to Italy, saw that they built fortified towns and said, I can do that as well to secure my holdings. It's a really peculiar city because it fundamentally changed just how we build our society and, well, civilization at the end of the day. And, well, building the church far away from town is one of the potential consequences here. And there it is. <laughs> it's raining right as we finish building it. Now that is of course unfortunate. And just look at this magnificent building. It is such a simple church. But if we compare it to the houses that have been built prior, this is the pride of this town. This is where everybody meets. This is where everybody is equal. And most importantly, um, well, this will give us a new status. This will elevate us. And this will ensure, of course, that everybody living in this town knows that what they're doing is good because it will serve God in one way or another. Now, let me actually take a look at this, right? Do I need to build... In this case, no. Okay, you don't need to build a road into this directly. This already counts. Okay, with this church done, we are now going to see a great, great increase of approval because, well, all of a sudden, the church need will actually be able to be fulfilled. There you go. I don't think, and I could be wrong here, but I don't think that in-game they actually go for services... Either way, what I'm now going to do so that we can get a huge wave of migration, like I said, it's basically already too late for, you know, everything related to us having fields and all that stuff. We are going to set it up, but I don't think that is what matters right now. I will start building more and more and more plots because with these plots, of course, more people can move in. And I mean, that's the dream, right? That is everything that we want to see. Man, I'm so happy that I made the circle smaller. There's such a nice, such a gracious distance now between us and the church. Anyway, um, I'm going to move you a little bit further out. And then, boom, there you go. Uh, that's not quite it. Okay, give me give me one second here. There has to be. I guess this is best I can do here. Sure, I'll take this. And then next up, we're going to build this. Although, honestly, this is kind of ugly. Can I just do it like this, maybe? God, this looks weird, but I'll take it. Let's find out what this actually looks like. These are weird plots, but hey, every plot here is specific. They're just basically wedges coming from the center here. So they're it's basically like a cake, right? We're partitioning a cake, and sometimes it might look a little bit odd. Now let's take a look at this. I think I'm going to make this one a really long one. Um, this would be perfect, just so that we get some dissonance in here. What do we got? Oh, that is perfect. Look at that. Yeah, these are six slots. So these are six families that can live on these plots. That is gorgeous. Like I said, uh, there's only one way in and out. I don't like, just for the record, that these streets stay small if nothing is built directly attached to them. Meaning this one road entry point into our town is the teeny tiny path that, well, it is right there. Let's just keep building this stuff up, though. That is the dream right here. Boom, yeah, look at that. We are slowly but surely clo uh, closing this, although this is much, much less an actual rundling, a circle here. It's, it's much more oval, but hey, listen, it is what it is. I'm just happy that we can finally see some migration into town because the more migrants we get, of course, the faster everything will be said and done. And that's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, let's take care of this, right? I'm going to assign a new guy right here in the forager hut. Uh, and I think then the rest can actually do some work. Sure. Another ruler's army was sighted. Oh, God. Okay, so the off-screen AI ruler every now and again will bring in troops to take over land. And, well, they are arriving. It looks like they're going to claim Waldbrand. Um, hmm. I would really like it if they could defeat some brigands. <laughs> and then I just take over the camp. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still waiting for that. No success, though. Oh, actually... Okay, I'm pretty sure the brigands here went off to fight against this lord. So, if I'm fast enough, I might be able to snipe this. Alright, so here's how the army works. Um, we were given some free equipment for our army, and I can create a new unit. We have been given spears, and we have been given shields, and I can gather them in this unit. Now, currently, we don't actually have enough population, but that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. I'm going to rally these troops. We're going to rally over here, because since this is empty, I can just literally run up to it and take it. 
That's the dream anyway. Let's take a look at our ragtag band here. Oh, and this brings me to one of my favorite topics. And this is the fact that these people all look different. They have different shield colors. They have different outfits. It is signified by how wealthy they are. Now, I do want to point out these are kind of different here because they are militia, right? Which means that they are just common folk. They are fighting. They are serving. And that's not really the standard. In the early Frankish Empire, that was the case. Everybody was a free man and everybody had to serve in the emperor's or the king's campaigns. But later on, especially in this period, obviously most of the stuff was done by professional and permanent fighters. And they still didn't really have a uniform. Everybody looked unique because that is exactly how it goes before we can standardize everything with very standardized production procedures and so on. I really like that this game is true to that. Like I said, obviously, I don't want to stick around with the militia here for too long because these are my actual pops. Uh, these are the people doing all the work for me. Now, anyway, I think we're going to talk about the military in due time as well. There's so much to do. Can we get there before them? Are they even going there? Let, let me take a look at this. Where are you going, pal? They're not going there. Okay, I think we're getting so goddamn lucky. That's actually crazy. How's this camp looking? You think I can also take this one? If I can get these points, call it cheesy, okay? But I'll take any income I can. They're not going there. Oh my god, we're actually gonna steal it from them. I love it so much. Wow. Like I said, we're gonna talk about the military enough in due time. For the time being, all you need to know is that I will be getting a lot of money here and it makes me so, so happy. Uh, where are you going, pal? There you go, look at that. Because now we get a message... And that says, Spoils of war. When searching through the enemy belongings, you find a stash of goods. They could be sent to your people who surely need them, though. It is your right to keep it if you want to. Uh, we could send it to my treasury. For the time being, I will simply send it to the nearest town. Which means our town suddenly will have some wealth and it is so, so good. Trust me when I say that. And I'm gonna even be super cheeky here. I'm gonna go down here in the hope that they kill the bandits and I can do the same thing again. Let's take a gander. Yeah, maybe I can kill the bandits. I doubt it, though. Let's be honest here. Oh, I see it. They're pulling the bandits. So the AI has provoked them and boom, they go in there. There is actually quite an excessive amount of logic behind how the AI behaves, by the way. But again, we're not going to see that until much, much later. God, I, I hope that I can grab this. Oh, but you know what? While we're here, let's take a look at this glorious, glorious battle. They are duking it out. And my god, uh, the bandits stand absolutely no chance. They have already been broken. Now, will I be the one? Oh, I will be the one, I think. I think I'm going to be collecting this bandit camp as well. Let's go. That is huge. And you're going to see that it's huge in just one second. It can pay to pay attention here. Quite literally, I'm going to absorb this into our nearest town as well. Oh my god, we have 435 regional wealth. God bless America. God bless Kaseritz. Now you might ask, what can we do with that money? And the answer is, while our troops are moving home, we can start and keep building up these locations. In this case, actually, we're going to have a couple of plots, I think down here. Yeah, these are going to be the long plots, and I'm going to put down some vegetable gardens there. Boom, there you go. Now these gardens are not passive, uh, the other stuff, so, you know, the golds and so on, they are passive. These aren't. The inhabitants actually need to take care of them, but they'll be fine. And then suddenly we will have vegetables. I can do this now in basically all of these locations. And since we are having such trouble hunting, I think having more goats makes a lot of sense for us. Now that I think about it, that is a perfect idea. Let's put them down right there. On top of that, actually, we can even do more. Um, let me search. Where did we put... Right over there. Okay, why did I put it over there? Anyway, we have this small stable here, and if I upgrade it, we can then also order another ox. Meaning, we will be better at transporting, etc, etc, etc. Getting the money from the bandits was huge. And there you go, I have dissolved them since they are back in friendly territory, and in due time, they will make it home and back to their families. Good luck to them. What we're now doing is essentially just building up these plots so that we can welcome more people and then we're going to start our real and massively significant economy, by which I mean this village will be a huge farming village right here. And after that, we can actually move on to the second village already, which I'm very excited for just because it will be so, so different. And yeah, look at that. The women of the town are building up the village as is, as the men are currently fighting. Ah, beautiful. Oh, what's wrong with him? 
He's wounded. You didn't even fight. <laughs> he must have fallen over or something. Ah, uh, Hermann here did not enjoy having to go to war. You live here, pal. Damn, rest until healed. Oh, he's just sick. I see. Okay. Well, good luck. Don't die, okay? And let's take a look at the backyard right here. This is one of the most important and yet underestimated things. And I would even say that mana lords could push this even further. Backyards were super, super important. On the fields, and we're going to talk about that in the next video, there was a very clear order for who owned what and for who had to do what kind of work. In your backyard, there was a lot of freedom, but also a lot of, you know, kind of narrow possibility. You could have some food here, you could have animals, whatever you can afford, and you go from there. Especially in new settlements, this played a huge role. Now, we can't do this, but, and I wish Manor Lords did this, just for the record, because it's just so amazing to me. But basically, um, if you had a backyard that was pointing towards the forest, you would also be getting your own firewood. Because why wouldn't you, right? It's directly in front of your door. Nobody needs to do the job as a whole. So there's no centrally organized firewood job that needs to be done by the community. Instead, you have it directly in, the, in your backyard. This is something that Manor Lords doesn't do quite, but... Already having these specializations in your backyard is huge. It's so, so cool. Alright, thank you for the commentary, pal. It's so cool to see that this kind of detail is implemented right here. This backyard will feed this house. And then whatever they have left over, they can bring to the market. They can bring to the next biggest town. And boom, all of a sudden, they are profiting beyond whatever they thought possible in just their local small economy. Ooh, and look at that. We've built another small stable. I really need to move that. But you know what? Let's ignore it for a time being. Let's hire another ox so that we have an easier time building things. And then I basically just want to take a quick look at this village at night. Uh, but for that, I got to fast forward a little bit. Again, we're going to make it through this year, even without having any farms. Don't worry about it. We have enough backyard businesses. And then next year, we're going to have a huge, huge farming boom. Look at all these people moving in. You love to see it. And again, not just that. They are also actually producing so many good things. I could upgrade these to level 2, but we're going to do that in the next episode. Don't worry about it too much just yet, okay? All right, folks. And let's round it off by taking a bit of a night walk here through our town. We start at the church. We've built it this episode. It was an incredibly important building and will be incredibly important for our people. I want you to take a really good look at the fields that lie before us because in the next video... Oh, listen to you. In the next video, we're going to change this area dramatically as well as we uh, finally make it so that we have a specialized town. Like I said, that is the biggest part. This will basically be a closed community. Good evening, sir. And this closed community will be great at taking care of the local fields. They will be the ones that basically create the food for everybody in this region and probably in many other regions to come. And then we have the town right here. As peaceful, as pretty, as wonderful as it is. We've made it smaller. I'm very happy actually about this. That, you know, I made that circle smaller. But this Rundling, oh, welcome. I think somebody just moved in. Nice to see you. We made it smaller and we're making this into a very, very tight-knit community. In the next video, we will have to fight off bandits. We will start building farms. We will start upgrading our houses. And then we will start looking towards the future, which means the manor, which means a secondary settlement that will essentially be the German nobility, will essentially be, you know, the bourgeois elements of this particular region. But for the time being, we have built this beautiful, beautiful self-contained settlement. Man, I love it. We also have a, t a second ox now, as you can see. We are progressing very, very nicely. My god, how many people are moving in here? <laughs> Damn, okay. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, let's take a good look from the distance here. Look at that church. I love it. I can't wait to upgrade it to a stone church. And I'll leave you right here. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think and what you think about our new city. Well, our new village right here. And I'll see you later. Alligator.